is the truth. Like we don't have time to start businesses, especially when you're already working full time. But I did it because it was, I didn't have a choice. There will be challenges and some of the sacrifices, you just have to think of what is most important for you. You're going to sacrifice, but where do you want to be next year? Where do you want to be in two years? Yeah. I have peers, I have RNs, it's Michelle. Like, I'm so proud of you. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to do that. Yeah. You know, so you have so many people looking up to you. Yeah. This is something that I love, helping people, making people feel better about themselves. So you'll find your why yeah. and that'll help you push through. Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Nurse Boss Shift. It's your girl, Dr. Kiana Jones. And I'm Crystal P, the beauty in peak. And today we have another special guest, Miss Michelle Richardson. <laughs> from You're from ATL? I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. You're from Nashville, mm -hmm. and you've been in ATL how long? Since 2011. 2011, all right. So she lives, though, here in ATL. You guys know we are doing our little special podcast shoot on set. Yes. Like, we, we really doing something. <laughs> And we have Michelle here. Uh, Michelle actually is the owner of Von Bo Studios, which is a med spa located here in the Atlanta area. And full transparency, Michelle was one of my mentees in the boot camp. So it's kind of, it's, it's, it's a real, this is unique for me. Like I, we've interviewed some of my mentees, but like you're actually opening today. So before we get started and talking about all of that, why don't you share just a little bit about your background, your nursing background, mm -hmm. um, how long you've been a nurse, what specialties you've worked in, things like that. Okay. So I have been a nurse for over 20 years, okay. starting off as an LPN. Um, I think it was, I can't remember if it's 2001 or 2002. I can never remember the year, but it was the year of 9-11. Okay. So that's oh, when wow. I started and I graduated the following June. And I was a LPN for about three, no, six years, because I have to remember RNs, they cut it in half. Okay. And I always <laughs> say three years, but six years mm -hmm. uh, when I decided to go back for my, to bridge to the LPN to RN. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so honestly, as an LPN, I got most of my experience because while going to school, mm -hmm. I did agency. And okay. while doing agency, you kind of go Everybody. where they need okay. you to go. So as an LPN, I worked at um, Centennial Medical Center in Nashville. And Why okay. you whisper that? <laughs> <laughs> so the only reason I'm whispering is because it was not a good experience. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. It was not a good experience at all. Um, like, I was a nurse extern. Okay. So as I went every day being um, oriented, I would have to listen to this nurse complain about being a nurse, mm -hmm. complain about not liking nursing, complain about I'm going to retire mm -hmm. and I'm going to work for a cruise ship. Mm -hmm. So when I got off, like when I got on my own, I felt like I was going to kill somebody. Yeah. You so I was like, uh-uh, this is not for me. And I quit. Okay. 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 And then I went to work for Sprint. Okay. <laughs> so you left, wait, hold on. You left being a nurse and then you went to work for Sprint? Yes. It's Dang. customer service. That must have been a traumatic experience. Right. For it real. was. Yeah. It was. I stayed there for probably another three months until I was like, Michelle, get it together. Like, <laughs> you went to school you to be a nurse. nurse. <laughs> you know, your mom's a nurse. You kind of yeah. grew up in the nursing environment. Yeah. Um, and then I went and I worked at a nursing home, which is also a traumatic experience. experience for you. Only because I was hired for one thing. And when I started, the RN quit. And so I was everything as a brand new nurse. Mm. Oh, yeah. Wow. And, you know, I am very passionate about my work. So yes. I would be there hours after I was supposed to clock out, making sure documentation was done. Mm -hmm. So I quit there mm -hmm. and I went to work for the jail system and that was fun. Yeah. The jail? Yes. The correctional? Is it, I like, was it in um, Tennessee? That. It was in Tennessee. Okay. Now it wasn't like prison. Okay. I tried that. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. But it was jail because, you know, they still have yeah. hope that they're mm -hmm. going to get off of whatever. So yes. they're still on their behavior. <laughs> uh -huh. I, the guards were really good. Mm -hmm. So I stayed there for about five years. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. All right. So you did that, and then at some point you ended up in Atlanta. And I was already an RN when I was in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Did you get your RN back in Tennessee? Or yes, Tennessee oh. State University. Okay, that's where you obtained your RN, mm-hmm. and then. You when you worked for the jail that was, was RN too. Oh, that was LPN. Was what, LPN. When did you trans? Tra- when did you? I transitioned. Da, 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 da. So, again, when I was getting my LPN to RN, I had to work agency. So mm-hmm. from agency, I was working at the LTAC Kindred. Mm-hmm. I worked at. Um, I, that's why I tried prison and it, it wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I worked at hospice. Okay. I worked doing different things. Mm-hmm to um, help me around my schedule. Mm-hmm. And I, I ended up at Kendrick because she gave me, she worked with me so well to where I could work only, I think it was Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays because Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays was school. school. Okay. And so from there is where I graduated as an RN. All right, you, be, you then you completed, you graduated. Then at what point did you end up in Atlanta? I ended how, up, how long ago was that? It was uh, so 2011 um, is when I came. Okay. Um, so I went to LPN, I'm um, LPN to RN at TSU. Right. From 2005 to 2008. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I did, so, okay, long time ago, 2003, I, I came here after a breakup. Okay. And I met someone. Okay. And so we tried to do a long distance relationship mm-hmm. and it didn't work. Okay. And I knew I wanted to go back, um, to school. Okay. And I knew at that time I had a four year old. Okay. So, um, I couldn't do it because I wanted to go back to school yeah. and I didn't have any family here. Yeah. So after I got my RN and I got financially stable, I bought a house. Yes. We kind of reconnected because we kept in touch. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, I need a change, you know. Oh. He was dating somebody, but it wasn't good. It wasn't working right. <laughs> right. And so, you know, <laughs> it was the me. dating scene wasn't wasn't, yeah. wasn't it in Nashville. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So then that's why I ultimately came, came here. here. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So you came here and then you, because your specialty, I know when you came into the program was case management, right? Is that where you, did you, or did you work bedside and then you went to case management or? So, while I was in uh, Tennessee, I actually got a job with my best friend. And it, that was the best med search job because mm-hmm. we were all a team and that really can make or break yeah, you as absolutely. a nurse yeah, at working bedside. Absolutely. And so she is like the number one med search. I don't want to do anything else. Okay. Yes, oh, that's good. what type of nurse she is. Yeah. Uh, me, on the other hand, I just needed my experience right. so yeah. I can and go bye. do something else. <laughs> yes. Um, so from there, uh, there was a case manager that approached me and she was like, Michelle, I love your documentation, your attention to detail. Have you ever thought about being a case manager? And I said, oh, what? Like, what's the case manager? Mm-hmm. So while I was at Centennial Medical Center, I was on the weekend program as a um, med surge nurse Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I was a case manager. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Did you like case management? I'm in case management now. Still in it. You're still in it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then at what point... Of the case management journey or what did you start thinking about entrepreneurship all my life okay mm-hmm. i mean before even yeah. i've always felt that i've always wanted a business okay. i've mm-hmm. always wanted to own a business so i've had a couple okay. um that were what you say expensive hobbies yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i've had a couple um but like before, when I was in Nashville, I was looking at the personal care homes. I've always okay. wanted financial freedom, flexibility. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I also wanted something to give my family, like yeah. something to show my family. Because yeah. I'm kind of the one that they look up to, yeah. that they ask questions. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to show them it could be done. Um, and then when I moved here, all the laws and everything were different for personal care homes. Right. Right. So and then I had to just get adjusted to Atlanta because it was different. It mm-hmm. was not what I, you know, the culture was a little different. It's like a mm-hmm. melting pot. Yes. Yeah. So here, um, I did case management. I had my daughter at that time, she was 10. Mm-hmm. And I needed a Monday through Friday, although I missed my three twelves. Yeah. Yeah. So I needed a Monday through Friday, started there, um, ended up transitioning from one hospital um, because I moved in with my then boyfriend Mm -hmm. um, to save on money. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when I went to the new hospital, I was a case manager. However, no training at this hospital. It was was a lot of turnover. Mm -hmm. It was was more stressful. Mm -hmm. So I then went back to the floor. Yeah, okay. Um, and while I was working on the floor, they kind of used me as Michelle, you know, do you want to be the interim uh, heart failure coordinator? Do you, mm-hmm. 
mm, I, I do anything. I like I like learning. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. And um, one of our so it was a hospital in a hospital. Okay. I was at South Fulton. Um, it's closed down now. Okay. And inside of that hospital was Regency, which is a LTAC. Okay. And so we would send them patients. And one of their a business development director came to me and said, you know, there is an opening for a director case management position. I think you'll be good for it. Mm-hmm. So I went back to case management. Okay. And mm-hmm. since then, that was 2014, okay. um, I was in leadership. You was in leadership. Nice. And I learned a lot. And so you flirted with different entrepreneurial ideas. Mm-hmm. What What is that process like? Because um, some people... When they try it, if it doesn't work or it doesn't happen the way they plan on it, they're ready to quit. They say that it wasn't meant. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to keep going? Like keep Keep trying trying. stuff out, keep, you know, just testing out the waters. What made you do that? Because um, what's worth it is not going to be easy. Yeah. You're going to go through failures, but you can't give up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you listen to these different, like Oprah. Mm -hmm these different mm-hmm. successful entrepreneurs and they didn't get out there first time and get big. So mm-hmm. what helped me was just the motivation of me not wanting to work for anybody. Yeah. I don't want to work for anybody. Um, I wanted to, I don't want to fail. Yeah. But then there's fear of failure. Mm-hmm. Um, I prayed for this mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you just got to keep the faith and listen to what yes. your are you, you know what your purpose is. Yes. It, it's not going to be easy. It is not, yes. but it's going to be worth it. And one day you're going to look back and then you'll be able to take a breath and see what you were able yeah. to okay. overcome. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I feel like, um, what I like about your story, um, a lot of our listeners can relate to, because like I say, they are mostly aspiring mm-hmm. or even novice uh, entrepreneurs. And so they're, they're a lot of the, the challenges that you go through the, at this phase is still like you have people in your ear telling you stuff. So you, you want to prove them wrong. And the minute something go wrong, they're most likely in your ear, like I told you. So, mm-hmm. so you're going through that. You got everything against you. You're low on money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're probably making a lot of investments and you're not seeing the return on that investment. That's another challenge. And then you're thinking about like, did I, did I make the right move? Like I've just really complicated my life. Things were so simple. Mm-hmm. I could have just went to work. I don't have to worry about all of this. Mm-hmm. So you have to work through all of those emotions as a as a new or even inexpiring entrepreneur how did you navigate through that though how did you go because I know you experienced it I, I, every single entrepreneur who goes through experiences this especially early on so how did you navigate that I can speak so let's talk about like the first business okay. the first business well not the personal care home because I didn't get anywhere with that because okay. I moved here right but uh, since case management I wanted to be a care coordinator and mm-hmm. I was going to open up my own care coordination um, to have individuals come and purchase my services because mm-hmm. there are a lot of people that don't know how the healthcare system works yes. Yes. and you know we have the sandwich generation right now and we have the baby boomer generation mm-hmm. right now so it's um, just a lot of information um, that I wanted to help uh, individuals with because it could be stressful. Yeah. So I actually had a mentor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, one of um, someone that I was networking with, because you network a lot when you are a case manager, came okay. and told me, I think you would be good as, uh, you know, with your business. I'm going to introduce you to her. Um, so she also talked about the expense of hobby. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I spent a lot of money. I uh, um you know, went to get my EIN. I did a lot of research on my set, on my own. Mm-hmm. So some of those things I knew before I got in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but my thing was, how do I, one, market? How do I create something that somebody wants to purchase? Because they're going to have to purchase it cash. Mm-hmm. Insurance does not pay for this. Mm-hmm. So how am I going to be that person that they want to come to? Um, so I did my work with the website, with all of that stuff, with money and and then it was in the middle of COVID and I stopped hearing from her. Mm-hmm. We finished the first part and I'm like, okay. This I'm was your mentor? This was my mentor. Oh, okay. Stopped hearing from her. Um, finished. I was ready for the marketing part. Mm-hmm. And so um, her husband emailed, uh, DM'd us that she had passed. Oh, she had cancer and she didn't tell anybody. Oh. And I gave up on everything. Yeah. <laughs> So at that point, I was like, I don't know where to go. I don't know where to turn because 
she, I mean, she was down to earth. She was, you know, yeah. you know, like yeah. I feel like this is, you know. Yeah. And so for a while, it was an expensive hobby. You know, yeah. I still tried to do this. Still tried. To, I went to conferences. I made business cards. Mm. I signed up for different associations. Yeah. And I didn't. I don't have not one client. Yeah. So yeah. tuition yeah. is what I call that. Mm. That's tuition. <laughs> It is. Mm -hmm. I'll have to pay tuition one way or another. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's tuition. Yeah, so that was my, I'll say my first real business venture, which yeah. I have not um, dissolved that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I do feel like uh, online yeah. course is probably going to be made out of that yeah, to yeah. help others. Yeah. So, It'll but I, back around. I'll, exactly. Got to work on one thing at a time. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but what I would say as far as the financial aspect yeah. is to know. One, uh, you have to know your finances, mm -hmm. where you are already with no business, yeah. Yeah. Where, what you spend and stuff on, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. things like that, um, because you are going to, one, your credit's going to have to be good even to get business yeah. credits. Right. So just try to have a savings, but know that you are going to make financial risks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're just going to have to be okay with it. Yeah. You might lose, you're going to lose some too. Oh, you're going to lose some, baby. <laughs> right. And you have to be okay with that as well. <laughs> Yes. But don't give up because it'll be for nothing. Mm. I wanted to ask you, being that a lot of our listeners and we talk about coaching and almost everybody that comes in, we ask them what was their biggest gym or whatever is always get a coach or a mentor. So mm -hmm. from having a coach uh, before who unfortunately mm -hmm. passed away and then finding Dr. Jones, I want you to speak to your process of finding her and how that was and your decision to hire her. So maybe some of our listeners can see or what it takes to find a good mentor. I was working um, as a director of case management at an inpatient rehab, and um, at this inpatient rehab, I'll say I haven't experienced racism until I moved to Georgia. Wow. And you were from Tennessee? Exactly. <laughs> Hello. Exactly. So when I worked at this inpatient rehab, I was the director of case management. Um, I worked at one facility, and there was racism, and I'm the type of person I speak up mm -hmm. when others don't because mm -hmm. what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. Right. So um, that was resolved, but you know, it was during the 2020, it was during Black Lives Before, Matter, mm -hmm. it was during the presidential election, Ooh, yeah. it was during all of that. Um, overcame that. Um, at that time, I was diagnosed with anxiety mm -hmm. because it was a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And you know, you get to thinking, like, I don't want to work for anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just mm -hmm. coming, it's just so. I, I wanted to climb up the ladder, you know, because I'm thinking if I don't save, I want to be safe. Yes. I want to have a check every two weeks. Yes, yes. So, you know, right now, you know, the, the business is in the back of my head, but I need to climb. You know, I'm not yeah. going to stay stagnant here. So I ended up going and opening a new hospital with the same company okay. and different CEO, different challenges. Mm -hmm. So CEO wasn't from healthcare, accounting, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of things that wanted to be done that was maybe fraudulent, mm -hmm. things like that, intimidating, mm -hmm. bullying. So, so at that point, I was like, what can I do? I cannot stay here. Mm -hmm. I'm working almost every day. Weekends, they're calling me. You know, I have little kids now. Mm -hmm. I'm missing out on things for them. My husband is like... Are you getting paid for this phone call mm -hmm. that you're getting on Saturday? No, but if I don't do it, you know, I'm going to get in trouble, mm -hmm. you know. So then I'm like, okay, so blood, sweat, and tears literally yeah. for somebody else's dream. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said, I, I, I got to open my, but I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was making six figures. Mm -hmm. I was getting bonuses. Yeah. Um, so I didn't know what to do. And then my friend, who's a respiratory therapist, sent me your DM. Wow. About the free webinar. Oh. How can you become a med spa owner? <laughs> wow. So I looked at it that first time. And, you know, sometimes you you have to wonder because there have been um, classes that I have mm -hmm. signed up mm -hmm. for and they just want your money. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, 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 you know, this was an investment. Yes. And so I'm like, OK, do I want to do this? You know, I talked to my husband and I told him how much it was and I had to look at his face. <laughs> <laughs> and then so I'm like, you know, on that first webinar, what I like about you, Dr. Jones, is that if it's an hour, but you have something else to say and we need to go over 10 minutes, <laughs> we're going to go over 10 minutes because I right. want you all to know this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's how I found Dr. Jones in that first webinar. I could tell how genuine she was down to earth yeah. and that this was a passion. 
you know, and, and helping others. When you say I want to help you avoid the things I had to go through, mm. that's what I need. Yeah. <laughs> so right. um, uh, I know my husband's probably going to watch this. <laughs> uh, so the second time around, because I talked to Julius, mm -hmm. I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. By the time I came back, the price went up. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Today's price. I said, the price, price. Went up. Some more graduates that launched. That's what that happened. I said, you know what? I'm going to have to tell my husband about this after no. I, afterwards. Oh, because he and, knew about the other price. Right. right. I, I didn't tell him about me starting at all. Oh, okay. Because sometimes you got to move we, this. That's a whole other podcast. That's a whole other podcast. You're trying to, for real. Speak on that, for real. You got to move in silence yes. because, you know, He's not a risk taker either. Yeah. But Smoke if you don't take risks, you're not going to get any. Oh, baby. Girl, if you are yes. complacent and content, mm -hmm. this is where you want to. This is not where I want to be. Yeah. So and yeah. that's how I found it. And that's how I joined. And what you look for. What What do you look for? Because I, yeah. I get a lot of people. And it's for me to speak to it. I, I feel like because I am a mentor. I, when this could be just my own issue, I'm always worrying that people think I'm trying to sell them. And I'm not trying yeah. to sell you. I'm trying to tell you, even me, what the, my process is to mm -hmm. find a mentor for that particular challenge that I have. So tell me, what do you, what's your process? What was your process? Were you, what were you looking for when you found, when you found me? Like mm -hmm. what, or any, any mentor, your other mm -hmm. mentor that you had, like what, what is that process? And are you looking for someone who, that you can relate to? Like mm -hmm. what, what are the things that you say, okay, this is the person for me. You have to be able to relate to that person or, um, be relatable. Like the teenage mom, mm -hmm. the, you know, it's, it, you have to be family mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we family. Yes. You know, I know this is a business and yes. I know, but I need to know that you really care about my success. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. I need to know that you are genuine. You're just not trying to take my money. Yes. And I also need to know that your program is worth what I'm paying. Y'all yes. get my money's worth. Yeah. Um, or more. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Period. When I tell you, <laughs> I get more with yours. But um, yeah. that's what I'm looking for. I need. Yeah. I want somebody that I can relate to. Yeah. That I can relate to. You know, everybody's not for everybody yeah. mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. so yes and speak to the person because again i like having you on here too because you they can understand that you are right where they are right mm -hmm. now so speak to the person who is worried about all of those things but also has a family also have kids like mm -hmm. no nobody has time for this like mm -hmm. this is the truth like we don't <laughs> have time to start businesses especially when you're already working mm -hmm. full time i know i was five years in working three jobs and i was in my PhD program when I was launching my business. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how I did it, mm -hmm. but I did it because it was, I didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. So talk to that person and speak to that journey. Like what are, are you sacrificing things? Are you, what, what does that look like for you in your life right now? Cause literally you're launching. So that's, yes. that takes time and energy. Yeah. Right. So I, I, you know, you know, I'm vulnerable. You know how I am. I tell my <laughs> stories because I feel like it'll help someone else. Absolutely. So I started your, your program in July and I have a now six, seven year old. And then I have a daughter that's going to turn 25. Okay. So um, while I'm trying to navigate this, while I'm working at this toxic job in this toxic mm -hmm. environment um, and I'm trying to sacrifice Really financially, you sacrifice yes. financially. Yes. Um, I am married. I have a husband, yes. so kids, and mm -hmm. and and um, mostly a breadwinner. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I have all these things in the back of my mind that mm -hmm. I have a lot of responsibilities. Yeah. I had to battle through my son being, I guess, um, what's the word? Being labeled at school as a four-year-old. Mm. because he had undiagnosed ADHD. Mm. So getting calls from the teacher, the teacher triggering him, because mm. I'm a nurse, so you mm. know those certain things right. that you can do. Which And she herself, I learned, was going through her own personal problems, but I'm getting phone calls every other day. He got suspended off the bus. Mm. I have to get to home from work at 2 o'clock. So it was hard. Yeah. It was hard yeah. because at this point, now I need to advocate for my child, mm -hmm. but I'm still working through trying to do this business. Yeah. Part of that, um, I guess, um, made the bullying and retaliation at work worse because mm. that was a reason to pick yeah. point fingers mm -hmm. and, you know. So um, 
it was hard, but I knew I wasn't going to give up. I cannot mm-hmm. give up because I'm going to be in the same place. Yes. I'm going to be in the same place next year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I had to deal through that and had to kind of put it on a hold a little bit because I had to um, hire an advocate, an IEP advocate. Yeah. I had to do a lot of stuff. But at the end of the day, I still had this in the back of my head. Yeah. I still, you know, um, so there will be challenges and some of the sacrifices you just have to think of what is most important for you you're going Mm -hmm. to sacrifice but where do you want to be next year where do you want to be in two years i have kids am i going to give up in front of my kids Mm -hmm. no Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i have uh peers i have rns michelle like i'm so proud of Mm -hmm. you i've always wanted to do that you know so you have so many people looking up to you and you don't want to, one, you don't want to fail yourself, but you don't want to let a lot of people down either. Yes, yes. So I just I just wanted to finish something I started um, looking into the med spa. This is a passion. This isn't a care coordination company that I'm doing just because I have experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is something that I love, helping people, making people feel better about themselves. Yeah. So you'll find your why, yeah. and that'll help you push through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. <laughs> That's so good. I love Sorry. that. I'm just like, go ahead. I know, I know. <laughs> That's so good. Um, okay, so you spoke about your your um, sacrifices mm-hmm. and how was the journey? So then you got you had some some challenges and then you decided mm-hmm. to get back and to keep going and to pick back up. Um, were you able to? I guess did you just go back to the program, start over? Did you have? I was on the calls. You, okay. I mean, I were on the calls okay, and was I on, was on Telegram. Yeah, she was, I was there. The biggest, the bi- no, honestly, you don't, you, she was the biggest supporter of every single mentee in that community. Like, honestly, when you left, we were so sad. Like, <laughs> Michelle, go, like, dead ass. You did, you definitely served you. even those on that who were just even, been there before you you were helping them and then those who came after you were you were serving them Mm -hmm. and i'm like it's it's just you you were such a the caliber of contribution you made to the community when you were in it was absolutely amazing which made me feel like no doubt no matter what and i always say you're going to experience disruption when you decide Mm -hmm. to do something it's like you make an intention disruption all hell breaks loose. And that really is the difference between those who keep th- keep going and those who don't. Mm-hmm. Those who don't will give up because they'll mm-hmm. be like, ah, I knew it. It wasn't right. meant. And they'll revert. Mm-hmm. Other ones will be like, all right, shh, I'm here. So mm-hmm. I'm about to keep going. You already in hell. Yeah. Why the heck right. would you turn around? Exactly. You made it this <laughs> right. far. Keep going through hell to get mm-hmm. to the other side because you have to experience it. You can't mm-hmm. get around it. And I didn't know she, you was going. I didn't even, I knew you had some challenges, but I didn't know all the things mm-hmm. was going on. But again, I feel like, and as a mentor, it's our role to just hold you accountable even still. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, yes, you're going to go through, life is going to life no matter what. So it's not a reason to stop. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask you, and this will be be our final question. I'm going to ask you about imposter syndrome because I get a lot of questions about it. Mm -hmm. And when you are in the process of transformation, all of the projected beliefs of other people, it could be partners, it could be mom, dad, whoever, sister, brother, whatever, will also come out. And then also your own insecurities will start to manifest. Mm-hmm. So how did you push through? And I know I won't even ask, did you have it? Because everybody mm-hmm. has it. So how did you push through it? And how do you continue to? Because even us, like I always talk about, like I still experience, I still be like, oh Lord, what am I doing? What am I going to say? Blah, blah. I don't know, right? But I know I'm going to show up. Mm-hmm. That's That I have like interwoven into the fabric of who I am. Mm-hmm. But but how have you worked through that? Your mindset and accountability course or uh, module. The mindset and accountability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those weeks be powerful. Um, <laughs> another thing is those. Um, ooh, then it's you again. So <laughs> at the end of last year, it was, um, I forgot what it was called, but you evaluate who you hang around. You evaluate mm. these things. Oh. And you eliminate those the challenge, that are, the yes. challenge I had. Oh, yes. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't tell everybody everything, mm-hmm. even in, even family. Mm-hmm. I told you I didn't tell my husband I purchased the thing. Uh-oh. You know? Uh-oh. He knows now, <laughs> and he is grateful for what he, he's setting up now. You yeah, know, he's getting my ready for your supporter. grand opening. He yes. is my biggest supporter. I love that. Um, but you just can't tell everybody everything, and you have to be around like-minded people, mm-hmm. um, those that are experiencing the same challenges as you. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and as far as imposter syndrome, just last week, I was like, 
am I going to be able to do this? <laughs> am I going to be able to open this? I mean, I was still, you know, doubting myself last yes, week. Yes. Um, but those thoughts will come up. Yeah. You just have to know how to address them. And you have to recognize those mm -hmm. thoughts. Mm -hmm. You have to recognize those thoughts. Yeah. And when you were saying about, you know, once you get closer to something and something happens, you're like, I know that's going to happen. We talked about this in the boot camp. Mm -hmm, the closer mm -hmm. you get to something, mm -hmm. the more challenges that yeah. you are going to encounter. Yeah. And that's how you know you're doing the right thing. Yeah. That's exactly. how you know that you yeah. are something is about to happen yes. um, in your favor. Yeah. So you have to recognize that and you have to push through. You have to not, you have to anticipate that. Yeah. And you have to have a plan. When this happens, what am I gonna do exactly? Yes. So um that's how I look. Uh, and praying. Yeah. I, I have to pray. And sometimes, yes. uh, probably about a couple months ago, I had to isolate from everybody, even my husband, and he understood. Mm -hmm. And I had to pray yeah. because I needed to hear something from God. Yes. So, you know, it's that. not going to be easy, mm -hmm. but you know it's not going to be easy mm -hmm. and you prepare for that. Yes. yes. And like you said, it's, it's a learning. Yeah. Once I get into this and I'm really in it, yeah. more things are going to yeah. come up. Yeah. So I'm being, I'm getting myself prepared for yeah. that. So, yeah, that's how I see it. I see everything as a learning opportunity. Yeah. What did I learn from? Even when I worked at the job while uh, racism. Yeah. What did I learn from? Yes. This? And then I'm, what are you preparing me for? Yes. I mean. Yeah, that's the right question. So that's how I see it. Yeah. It's going to be something. Know it. Yeah. Be able to recognize it and have a plan to work through it. I love it. We need to have another job, another podcast, job. Chris, about um, about marriage and entrepreneurship. We've been saying though. that. We've no, we really like. We need a panel yeah, of married entrepreneurs to talk about how to navigate it. Because what I find is that, and I'm, I'm not going to talk about it right now, but I will say this: <laughs> what I find is that I I be in a conundrum. Like I want to be like, girl, if you don't, but I know you marry right, like you, so you can't. But it's Nobody is going to understand what God is seated in you, but you, mm -hmm. and I, I don't want to negate or like dismiss your partner, but to try to get somebody to see what he has given to you is not usually going to happen. Mm -hmm. Even when you have somebody to support, even when it is a support, they're like, mm -hmm. go ahead and do it. They're still not going to get it yeah. mm -hmm. like you will. And so that is very difficult when you feel like you've been called to do something and be something. And then your partner is like, I'm not spending that. We're not spending that kind of money. Like what? No, nah. because they don't see it as mm -hmm. an investment and they look at things different. And most of the time we have, our partners are usually the opposite of us. Yeah. So you may be the, and which is the a good spender. combination yeah. because yeah. you probably would always be broke. Mm -hmm. Right. So you, right. <laughs> so right. you got, you, you are like ambitious and risk taker and your partner's like, whoa, 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 yeah. hold yes. up, swell up. Like, let's, let's, yes. let's, let's look at that. Mm -hmm. But you come somewhere in the middle but if you continue, especially with entrepreneurship, if you just go where they are, you're never going mm -hmm. to achieve it. I was thinking that's when you say, babe, she had to sell her programs 50% off. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, 50. We, we actually <laughs> save and we actually win it. Exactly. We actually, and look, she didn't win up. Can you imagine? I missed out on this. Right. Amount. But yeah, so that, that'll that be a whole nother topic we'll have you, we'll have you on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's I definitely good. am glad that you came to speak with us today, yeah, Michelle. So um, yeah. we, we decided to have this hot seat you guys because um we feel like there although we bring bring great value it's good mm -hmm. to have someone who is right where you are and we know we also have a subset of um of our community who are aspiring or are barely into it and already mm -hmm. scared and ready to retreat yeah, yeah. so we have somebody like michelle to come on here and tell you guys what's possible she is actually launched today we're going to her yes, launch yes. i'm so happy so it's all <laughs> on the same weekend um but michelle let everyone know how they could um contact you reach oh. out to you y'all don't be sending her messages about coaches. Yes. She's not a coach. I'm not. And don't be trying to get her notes. <laughs> don't be trying to ask her to get access to the program either. They're going to ask for your user and your password. But tell them how they can reach you, your um, Instagram and uh, your website, all that. Yes, I can be reached um, on Instagram at Bonbo Studio. That's B O N B E A U Studio. I have a website, www. Von Bo Studio and a TikTok at Von Bo Studio. Okay. So Von Bo Studio on all platforms, even IG, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And she is in the Atlanta area, y'all. Yes. So if you're looking for an injector, 
go see my girl. Right. All right. Um, last, last takeaway. Give them one thing. I'm talking about, now I want you to talk to the aspiring mm-hmm. nurse entrepreneurs, the ones who are like, should I do it? Should I give them something, uh, something that's tangible, that an uh, actionable step that they can, they should take right now if they're in that position where they just like, should I actually do it? You know, the ones who said as of December 31st, all my life is going to be different. New year, new me. Those people <laughs> that's still in the mm-hmm. same place. Mm-hmm. Talk to them. So if you're aspiring to be a nurse entrepreneur, you're going to have to sit down and create, make goals, goals. make tangible goals that you can meet. Smart goals. Yes. There you go. Timeline like small. Yes. Not anything that you know you're not going to be able to accomplish in this certain time because yeah. then you're going to feel like a failure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you have to make small, take small little steps, whether it's, what do I want to do? Mm-hmm. Um, what do people need? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What do I feel like I'm good at? What yeah. do I do now that everybody says I'm good at that, it, like you said, comes safe, like come second nature? Yeah, and just take then, inventory. Yes. Like, even if you do that, that's doing something. Yes. Yeah. And then January, okay, I'm going to research this and I'm going to fine tune this. February, I'm going to, oh, well, let me get my EIN. Let me do, because that's easy. Go, let's go and name make sure it's available Mm -hmm. so do those small steps and Mm -hmm. you'll start to see things when you get your mail and you say oh okay i have something from the state you know secretary of state Uh and i have my ein and you'll start to see um and also try to get around like-minded people Ooh, that's powerful you try to get around like-minded people and anybody that you feel is going to be a negative a negative person around you you're going to have to let them go yeah yeah you don't have to let them go Oof. because it's not going to be easy. But yeah. writing it down so you can kind of see and checking it off. Mm-hmm. Yes. You'll feel yes. great. Like, I'm, I'm doing something. Yes. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love that. Chris, any last words before we... Thank you for coming. I'm so oh, excited. Thank you. Thank I'm so you. excited to see your journey, so I will definitely be following as well. Thank yes, you. yes. Amazing. Well, thank, thank you. you so much, Michelle. You thank already you. know how I feel about you. <laughs> I'm so proud of you and the steps that you have taken to make your dream come true because you did it. I don't care if you were in the program, you actually took the steps because there are people who are not willing to take action. And I think having the right mindset is number one. I don't Mm -hmm. care what you're trying to do. You could be running for president. It doesn't matter. Get the right mindset. Spend some time in that, I say, is super, super important. Um, But until next time, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. Don't forget to share, to comment. Tell us what you guys like. Like, we don't even know. Is this good? Do you guys want us to get some (laughs) newbies on more often? Just let us know in the show, in the um, comments. And also, don't forget, we also are on YouTube, Nurse Mm -hmm. Boss Shift. So watch us on YouTube. That's it. All right, you guys. Until next time. Bye.